Today we are going to talk about scapula. In this session, we are going to talk about angles, borders, surfaces of scapula. We will also discuss muscle attachments, articulations, nerve relations and side determination of scapula. Scapula is also known as shoulder blade. It is a flat triangular bone of upper limb. It has three angles, three borders, three processes and two surfaces. It articulates with upper end of the humerus to form shoulder joint. It also articulates with lateral end of the clavicle. This articulation is also helping weight transmission from limb to the axial skeleton. There are two scapulae, one on either side of the supine. It is best viewed from behind. It overlies second to seventh ribs. Scapula has got three angles, superior angle, inferior angle and lateral angle. Lateral angle is also called the glenoid angle. The three borders of the scapula are medial border which lies between the superior and inferior angles, lateral border lies between lateral and inferior angles and superior border of scapula which lies between lateral and superior angles. As shown in this diagram, lateral border of the scapula is thick, it lies between the lateral and inferior angle. Medial border of the scapula is thin, it lies between the superior and inferior angle and superior border of the scapula is notched, it lies between superior and lateral angle. The scapula has got two surfaces, ventral surface which is also called anterior surface of the scapula and a dorsal surface which is identified by the presence of supine. Dorsal surface is divided by supine into suprasupinous and infrasupinous fossae. It is also called a posterior surface. The dorsal surface of the scapula is divided into two regions by supine of the scapula. Below the supine lies infrasupinous fossa and above the supine lies suprasupinous fossa. The great scapular notch or sphenoglenoid notch. The two fossae communicate with each other through great scapular notch or sphenoglenoid notch. The region above the supine is called suprasupinous fossa. Suprasupinous fossa is best seen when we view the scapula from above. Dorsal surface of the scapula, as already said, is divided by supine into two fossae. One fossa lies above the supine and is called suprasupinous fossa. Suprasupinous muscle is attached in this fossa. Infrasupinous fossa lies below the supine. Infraspinatus muscle arises from this fossa. This is infraspinatus originating from infraspinous fossa and suprasupinatus muscle present in the suprasupinous fossa. The scapula presents three bony projections. On viewing scapula anteriorly, we see coracoid process. It hangs anterior to the glenoid cavity. The second process of scapula is called acromion. Acromion overlies glenoid cavity. It stabilizes shoulder joint. On viewing scapula from side, we can see coracoid process which lies anterior to the glenoid cavity. Acromion process which overhangs glenoid cavity. It stabilizes shoulder joint. On the dorsal surface is supine of scapula. The glenoid cavity of scapula articulates with upper end of the humerus to form shoulder joint. So the articulations of the scapula are with the upper end of the humerus to form shoulder joint, with the lateral end of clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint. The angles of the scapula are inferior angle, lateral angle and superior angle. As already described, scapula has lateral border which is thickened, medial border which faces supine and is thin and superior border which lies between the lateral and superior angles. Supine of the scapula has two lips. From the lower lip arises deltoid muscle. You can remember D for down, D for the deltoid muscle. For the upper lip you can remember T for top. It gives attachment to trapezius muscle. So the attachments of scapula are 
lower lip gives attachment to deltoid and upper lip gives attachment to trapezius muscle. Lateral border of the scapula is thickened. Above the gillnite cavity is a tubercle. We call it a supragillnite tubercle. It gives attachment to long head of biceps. Below the gillnite cavity is infragillnite tubercle. From infragillnite tubercle originates long head of triceps. The lateral border of the scapula is again thickened. It gives attachment to long head of the triceps, teres minor and teres major muscles from above downwards. You can remember it that minor is always on the shoulders of major. So teres minor rests on the shoulders of teres major. Inferior surface of the scapula, subscapularis muscle arises from the ventral surface of the scapula. It's a multipinnate muscle. To the medial border of the anterior surface is attached serratus anterior dorsi originates from upper eight ribs. It is attached to the medial border of the scapula. It fixes the medial border of scapula with the rib cage. Now what is winging of scapula? It is a condition in which the medial border of the scapula becomes prominent. As already said, serratus anterior is attached to the medial border of the scapula which in this muscle originates from upper eight ribs. It attaches or holds medial border of scapula with the chest wall. This muscle is supplied by long thoracic nerve or bell. Paralysis of this muscle makes medial border of the scapula prominent which is called winging of scapula. The medial border of the scapula on the dorsal surface gives attachment to levator scapulae muscle above the supine, rhomboidus minor muscle opposite to root of supine and rhomboidus major below the root of the supine. Again you can see here that rhomboidus minor rests on the shoulders of rhomboidus major. Inferior angle of the scapula is crossed by latissimus dorsi. Here so it gives attachment to latissimus dorsi muscle. In this diagram, we can see the muscular attachments to the medial border of the scapula on its dorsal surface. So, levator scapula is attached above the supine. Opposed to the root of supine is rhomboidus minor and below the rhomboidus minor is rhomboidus major. To the angle of the scapula is attached latissimus dorsi muscle. Superior border of the scapula, as already said, lies between the lateral and the medial angle. This border of scapula is notched and this notch is called suprascapular notch. From this notch arises inferior belly of omohyoid muscle. Omohyoid has got two belly, superior belly and inferior belly. Superior belly is attached to the hyoid bone and inferior belly arises from suprascapular notch. On the dorsal surface of the scapula, we can see the coracoid process. We can also see the acromion process. This acromion process bears an articular facet. As already said, this articular facet articulates with the lateral half of the clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint, as shown in this diagram. So the articulation is of the scapula, it articulates with the upper end of the humerus to form shoulder joint. Acromion also articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint. Ligament is attached to the scapula. Coracoacromial, it extends between coracoid process and acromion. This ligament stabilizes the shoulder joint. Coracoclavicular ligament, it lies between coracoid process and clavicle. Acromioclavicular ligament, between acromion and clavicle, it stabilizes acromioclavicular joint. Now, what are the nerve relations of scapula? As already said, superior border of the scapula contains a notch, what we called a suprascapular notch. This notch is covered by transverse scapular ligament. At times, this ligament gets ossified. So, this notch is converted into a foramen called a suprascapular foramen. Suprascapular artery passes above the ligament and suprascapular nerve passes below the ligament. Suprascapular nerve supplies supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Suprascapular artery passes above the transverse scapular ligament. We can remember it by air force lies above. So artery is above and navy lies in the sea. So it is below. So below the ligament passes nerve and above the ligament passes artery. And above the ligament passes suprascapular artery which supplies the suprasupinatus and infrasupinatus. Another vessel related to the medial border of the scapula is 
deep branch of transverse cervical artery. These two vessels along with subscapular artery form an anastomosis around the scapula and this anastomosis connects first part of subclavian artery with the third part of axillary artery. This anastomosis becomes important when we are operating on the upper limb and we may have to ligate the axillary artery or in cases where there is kinking of the axillary artery, this anastomosis maintains the blood flow to the upper limb. Now the question which is usually asked in the examination is how to keep scapula in normal anatomical position. To keep scapula in normal anatomical position, superior angle should face towards the head, lateral angle should face laterally and the medial border of the scapula should face towards supine and, and supine should face posteriorly or dorsally. I want to summarize this lecture as scapula is a triangular flat bone. It articulates with humerus clavicle and, and transmits weight from upper limb to axial skeleton. It has got three angles, three borders, three processes and two surfaces. To keep it in normal anatomical position, it is supine should face dorsally, glenoid cavity laterally and superior border towards the head. Anastomosis around the scapula maintains blood supply to the upper limb if axillary artery is ligated or kinks during surgery. Paralysis of serratus anterior, which is supplied by the long thoracic nerve of the bell, leads to winging of scapula in which medial border of the scapula becomes prominent. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Let us have a demonstration of the scapula. Scapula, as already said, is a triangular oh. flat. It has got a superior angle, a lateral angle and an inferior angle. Between these angles are lateral border which lies between the lateral angle and inferior angle, superior border which lies between the superior angle and lateral angle and medial border which lies between the superior angle and inferior angle. Lateral border is thickened and medial border is thin. Well, the anterior surface which is also called the ventral surface, then dorsal surface of the scapula which is also called the posterior surface of the scapula, it presents the supine. Supine of the scapula divides it into two fossae. One is suprasupinous fossa lying above it and infrasupinous fossa lying below the supine. The lateral border of the scapula presents glenoid cavity. Above the glenoid cavity is supraglenoid tubercle. Rest of the lateral border gives attachment above to the teres minor and below to the teres major muscle. Superior border of the scapula presents the suprascapular notch. From the notch arises inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle. The, this notch is at times converted into the foramen by transverse scapular ligament. Above the ligament passes suprascapular artery and below the ligament passes suprascapular nerve. Medial border of the scapula on the dorsal surface gives attachment to levator scapulae above the supine Opposite to the root of supine, it gives attachment to rhomboidus minor and below the supine, it gives attachment to rhomboidus major. Again here, major lies below and minor lies above. And angle of the scapula on the dorsal surface is crossed by, by latissimus dorsi muscle. So, so some fibers of latissimus dorsi are attached to the inferior angle of the scapula on its dorsal surface. The anterior surface of the scapula as shown here, major part of it gives attachment to subscapularis muscle. Its medial border gives attachment to serratus anterior muscle. Serratus anterior arises from upper eight ribs. It is attached to the medial border of the scapula. It holds the scapula with the rib cage. Three processes of the scapula are supine, acromion, and corocoid process. Corocoid process as shown here lies anterior to the glenoid cavity. Acromion process lies over the glenoid cavity. Acromion process bears an articular facet through which it articulates with lateral end of the clavicle to form acromioclavicular joint. Glenoid cavity articulates with the upper end of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. Both shoulder joint and acromioclavicular joint are important 
for momentous of the scapula, momentous of the humerus and also important for weight transmission from limb to axial skeleton. Now how to keep scapula in normal anatomical position? To keep scapula in normal anatomical position, it is superior angle should face towards the head. The medial border of the scapula should face towards the supine and supine of the scapula should face dorsally and glenoid cavity should face laterally. So this scapula belongs to left side. Thank you for watching this video. Siphonoglenoid notch through which suprascapular nerve enters into infrasupinous fossa.